preach His Word and to worship Him in spirit and truth. Yeah. This, this morning we'll be in the book of Luke chapter 5, also in the book of John chapter 21. John 21 and 5 in the book of Luke. And uh, this morning, you know, Brother Gabe uh, talked about uh, different ones that believe in certain different ways and, and things that we look even sometimes in our own households, you know, our own families, neighborhoods, churches, and so on. How can we all have so, so much different beliefs and be only one God? Because we make gods of men. And we make men's doctrines to be the this doctrine is. of Christ. And he said, there's no other doctrine what do you need except one? that of Christ. And that's it. And we move away from that, stray away from that, then, then that's where we get our divisions. Apostle Paul said, there be divisions among you. And that's our problem. So when we look and see that we're able to come together in one mind and one accord, how much unity then we have of faith and how much that we have to be able to have the strength and how people can be saved and how we can all grow in grace and knowledge uh, you know of Christ that's the most important thing Amen. and so when we make men's doctrines you know and doctrines of devils and so on that 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 interjects itself to separate us and brings in that confusion so then when we leave off that leadership of the Holy Spirit, there, there's the main thing is that we look and we, we take doctrines of our traditions of men, things that's been established for years and years and years and still not right with God. But we'll say it is. And we follow after that and when we're shown to be able to change, uh, you know, we won't because we know that we have to admit that we're wrong. And pride gets in the way. Is that not one thing that's there? Those things that God says he hates? Mm -hmm. Lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. When we won't admit that we do not know or we are wrong, we've got a problem. And so, uh, but anyways, uh, how that we can know some of the things of God, uh, we, we look as far as Pete's concerned, that he, he's, he's heard this, Part of this message before, this is just part two. We'll do that for Pete, this is part two. <laughs> so, uh, what we can know, and we'll probably be over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 a little bit there at the end of the message, Lord's will. So, uh, and uh, Pete's probably sitting there thinking, what's that got to do with this? Well, we'll Lord's will, and we'll try to put this together if we can, and with the Lord's help, we'll be able to. So you remember when you was first saved, when the Lord called you, whatever you was doing? Mm -hmm. When Luke chapter 5 here, the Lord was walking by the shores of Galilee and all the places, and he was calling his disciples, you know, from different places, you know, sitting under the tree and walking by the tax collector and telling them, say, you know, leave what you got and follow after me. Well, here's a story of, of, about the uh, fishermen. And so, in here in the book of Luke chapter 5, it said, he came to pass that as the people pressed upon to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of the Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were going out of them and were washing their neck. They didn't quit fishing. It doesn't, doesn't already toil all night or all day and, and was taking care of their gear. In other words, their fish nets and so on like that. And so uh, he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Okay? So then he said, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep. We go, if we want to know anything about the deep things of God, you've got to launch out. You got to step out, you know, into the deep. It's sort of like even in the natural heaven. And I think God used parables to help us understand the heavenly things. Uh, you know, earthly understanding. You know, or how we understand one way or another to help us to understand heavenly things. So, you know, if you're looking in the carnal, and you know, it, it's all right that if you go swimming 
and you step out in ankle deep water, and you ain't too awful much afraid. Right? In, in other words, in the kiddie pool, you ain't too afraid. But boy, when it gets over your head and you can't swim, then that's when you become afraid. But you have to step out by faith, right? You have to know if you've got the skills and you've obtained those skills to learn how to swim. Or, you know, if you're, uh, here, here they are, he tells them, you know, uh, he said, launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a drought. In other words, you're going to catch a lot. He then told him, you're going to catch a lot. It <laughs> takes faith to believe that. All right? So anyways, and Simon answered and said, Master, we have told all the night. There's a difference between night and day. Spiritually now, we know there's a difference between night and day in the carnival. We can look outside and see the sun, beautiful sunshine out there today. The Lord give us, and we just come out of the night and so on like that. We know the, but what about the spiritual night and day? Do you know who the day is? Yeah. The day is Jesus Christ. Jesus. That's the day. Brother, uh, Pastor, you talk about people you can't, uh, that you that talk about they can't understand the thousand years. Yeah. They can't understand they're in the day. They're in the thousand years. Yeah. They're in the day. Yeah. He said, be not ignorant to this one fact that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. If you're in Jesus, it's that simple. Yep. And this word of God is so simple that a wayfarer man don't be in the fool with no the earth therein. Amen. We cannot get past our carnality and the teachings that, that somebody told us somewhere and said that, hey, he's going to come back and set up the kingdom. We can't get past that. And it's going to be because we read it many it does. It says so, you know, even for a thousand years, you're going to bind Satan for a thousand years. When he's loosed out of his prayer, we can't get past that. It's so simple, we cannot get past that. And so we look, if we're in the day, we're in the thousand years, because he is the day. He's the thousand years. What, you're in the day, and it'll never end. That day never ends. Amen. And so, it, so here, you know, it takes faith and he, they have done all in the night. And most of the time what we're trying to do and toil because we don't have any, see any results of our prayers. We don't see any results of our preachings and our teachings to get people to understand is because sometimes we're doing it in the night. You say, well, you mean you can't preach in the dark? Well, you know, most of the time when we hold revivals, it's in the night time. Has nothing to do with what time of day or night that you're preaching or teaching, yeah. right? We have that understanding. We know, and, and and I teach in my Bible studies, and and brother pastor here, brother Gabe, said something other in his prayer this morning. His open up service, he said, "Pray for brother James as he comes and breaks the bread." Well, I ain't got no biscuit bread for you today. I mean, no corn bread. So we know the difference then, don't we? We understand that's spiritual. Now, I mean, you'd probably, if Kathy had baked some good bread and brought it, you know, some of, that, some of them rolls, but I'm telling you what, it's what makes me fat. <laughs> you know, in the natural. You know, they're good, and I even make it worse for slapping a lot of butter on them. But the whole thing, we understand there's a difference in that, but when it comes to some other things, we cannot understand. When we read the Word of God, and it's more than... What time to hear what his others he said, Lord, we have told, we have fished all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, remember now, I said, remember when you got saved. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Yeah, remember, Peter's not following after Christ as of yet. He's not following after him. So he said, but at the word, he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The word of God is powerful that when it comes to us, you know, that there was something that made you get up wherever you was at or whatever you did, your heart moved somewhere towards God to listen, to move, to come close to God. And even so, even after we're saved, there's something that helps us to move to want to know more about Christ. That something when it's spoken and it's said sparks us to have something to say, I want to know a little more. I want to study about that. That should be my purpose, and Gabe's purpose, and teacher's purposes, mm -hmm. and so on like that, that sparks your interest, to help us to know, to grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we cannot do that alone. 
It has to be by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It has to be by the truth and by the Word of God. <coughs> and I'm like Brother Gabe. There's things that I need to know. I mean, I don't care. How, somebody asked me yesterday at the conference how long I've been preaching. I said, I think about 37 years. You know, even though it's a pretty good little while, <coughs> there's some things that I still would like to know. And, you know, when it comes time, I believe God will let me know it. If I seek after it, I want to know it. And I'm thankful for what he's let me know. But we can search out the deep things, yay, the deep things of God. We're going to find that out here in a little bit. And so, but he said, nevertheless, you remember when you got, so somebody, you read the word of God, you heard preaching, you heard a testimony, you heard teaching, you heard something that sparked your heart and your mind and you, you figured out, hey, if I don't get Jesus, I'm going to die and go to hell. It's not just that, hey, I need to go and be in church somewhere to be social. We come to gather ourselves together to worship God in spirit and truth. Amen. If we only come just because to see and to be seen and because it pacifies us, well, I did God a service. I went to church today. You might as well just went on back to the house. Yeah. Because you're not going to get anything. Because you're double-minded. And James said a double-minded man perceiveth nothing from God. He's unstable in all of his ways. But he said, nevertheless, at thy word, at thy truth, because he said this word, he is the word. Jesus is the word. That was what saved people in the beginning. It's what saves people now. It's what will save people after we're dead and gone. If so be that at the coming of the Lord. It's still by the word. You're begotten by the word, by the truth. And Jesus said his word was spirit. His, his word was life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Peter, he knew there was something different. And you, you knew there was something different. You remember the day that you got saved? You knew there was something different that day when you got saved. There was acting in your life, in your heart. And when they had done, had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. I mean, boy, Jesus is working a miracle. Huh? So let out the deep. And he said, well, we've told all night they ain't much need. There's no fish gathered here in this place. And they beckoned them to their partners which were in the other ship and they that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. He was repenting. Amen. He was repenting. Amen. You say, well, you mean that all it took was for him to gather in a whole big bunch of fish? It took that, that he knew there was something different that day in his life. At the word, he, he obeyed. And he, no doubt, just like I'll say for myself, that you look and you answer your own self and your heart and your mind. I can remember when I got saved and when I backslid upon God and I came back to God. I can remember that time at Fleming Town. I can remember that day. Still yet. As long as I got good mind and stuff, I believe I'll remember. And all that night before, there was trouble in my heart. On a Saturday night. And for all that week before things of events led up to, there was trouble. And so I have no doubt that Peter was thinking upon things because he had heard about, no doubt, this man called Jesus that was going about doing certain things. And he was sitting thinking, wonder if this man has got the way of life. Wonder what he and so here Jesus came. He knew Peter's heart. He knew Simon's heart. He knew all of those that were helping him, the sons of Zebedee, that was all partners with him in the fishing business. He knew all of them, and probably in amongst their work, it's sort of like me and Tim Mullins when we used to be in business together. I was saved at one time. We both was lost, and then one time I was saved and he was lost. And then I was dealing with preaching and he was lost and could not understand some things. And so, you know, there, there were things, but yet we would in business, we would talk about and people would come up 
to the business where we was at and in that day we would talk about Jesus. Lost people. It was my job to witness. And we would talk about the Jesus and, and the table lost. We talked about the Bible and they would talk about Bible just like me and one of the things that they wouldn't talk about was the end of the world. A long time ago they, we was wondering about the end of the world. And how it was going to happen. And people had all these ideas. And I had mine. And I had some of the traditions that I thought that it was going to be. And how it was going to be. Until you come to know the Spirit of God. And He begins to reveal things. And you step out into the deep. He said, Peter, step and go out into the deep. Cast out into the deep. I want to show you some things. I want to give you the truth of what you need. And I'm going to show you some things. God began to show me some things. How about you? God began to show you where you was at in your life and He wanted you to launch out into the deep. He wanted to see where you was at and you had to step out in faith to be able to get into that deep. To trust Him that He was your Savior that the only way you could get to heaven was done by Him. And you trusted that. So he fell down. He said, "For he said, depart from me. I'm not worthy to be in front of you. He said, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he was astonished at all that were with him and all that were with him and the draw of the fishes that which they had taken. And so was, was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth he repented he said, I'm going to change what you're doing in your life. You've got to have a change. You're going to become a new creature, Simon. He said, Simon, thou shalt be called the rock. Thou art the rock. Later on, after growth came, uh, this is Simon Peter now. He said, Peter, thou art the rock. He, you know, and so he said, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. He was using those things of what was that he was used to of his job and his fishermen and he was showing him that if you'll believe that you can do this in the natural, how about the spiritual? If you can understand things to understand to know that I'm the Christ and if we as Christians understand enough that we know that Jesus Christ is the Savior, how much more then does he want to reveal unto us? And he said, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. They left that off. They had a change in their life. Uh, I had to have a change in my life. And when this and the, when the things that I desired, and he said, if we want to uh, be a part in the, those things of the gospel and if to carry the ministry, we desire the good work and so on like that. And listen today, when God was imposing upon me and wanting me to carry this gospel, He gave me the means, He gave me the spirit, He gave me the knowledge, He gave me the understanding. He gave me, and we, He wants us to search us. Paul told young Timothy, he said, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. And so we have to look into the deep things of God. So let's go and let's turn over to some of the same things. We're going to talk about fishing more in John 21. But some time had passed by. Jesus had done been crucified and He had done rose from the grave. But sometimes we get on in our Christian life, we get started on our way and we launched out into the deep and we want the understanding of God. We want to know how to be the good Christian. We want to know what kind, what kind of work we're to do in the church. What would you have me to do, Lord? God comes to us as He speaks to us twice. He comes to us for salvation. Then He wants you to do something. Just as He spoke to Abraham, He called Abraham out of the earth of the colonies and said, Get thee out of the land of thy fathers into a place where I'll show you the and Abraham obeyed and it was counted because he believed God. It was counted unto him for righteousness. Then God came back and spoke to Abraham and said, I want you to do this and I want you to, if you'll do only these things and you'll obey, obey me, I'll make you, listen, a nation. Out of your loins will come a nation. He said that, listen, today was to be as 
more than the sand of the seas and the stars of the heavens. You know what Abraham believed in? But he began to doubt a little bit. Sarah doubted. And they, there, but God knows what we are but as flesh. And he come to prove himself. He come to the time went on for a while. And he had no son. But he gave him a promise. He gave Sarah a promise when he come to visit him. And listen, they all laughed at the promise. But then, and they thought, well, God's not hearing me. And she said, I never laughed. Sarah snickered in her tent, laughed in her tent, and said, I did not laugh. And he said, oh, yeah, he did. About this time, according to the time of life, you'll bring forth a son. She was old, and he was too. Took faith. They were older Christians, still plugging along, believing. But there were some things that they needed to know. And they needed to have faith and for God to fulfill His promise. And Abraham, it said, he did not stagger at the promise of God. So for a while there, you know, he led his wife in comparison to the spiritual of the church. Say, we're not going to have a son. So she gave her handmaid over. Son to him. That's where we get this one. There's a church out here in the world. And there's a church of God. One's born by the handmaid, uh, which hath not a husband, but the one that has with which is from above is the mother of us all. That's who the promise came by. Through Isaac. That was when he, God made him that promise and he believed it. And listen today, and he, God was faithful in what he done. So when you and I step out as Christians and we want to know, and so there's that time when God is telling us as we get a little bit older, he, there's a time that we're getting used to being Christians. Some it's a long time, some it's a short time. Then he wants us to do some things and he puts the hedge around you. And brother, you felt like you could fight a bandsaw. Nothing to touch you. Huh? There's nothing to touch you. He put a hedge around you, but he said he's going to find out what you, how much faith you've got in the trials that will come. Step out into the deep. Step out and find out. Listen today if God is God. That's what he's saying. Try me and see if I'm not good. Search me. And God's going to search you. As David looked and said, Try me, O Lord, search me. Find out if there be any, any hidden thing, any secret sin within me. And God's going to do Because He wants fit subjects for the kingdom of God. And so in, verse, in chapter 21 of the book of John, in verse 1, He said, After these things Jesus so showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. On, the, on this wife showed he himself. He said, this is how he showed himself. Down by the sea. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee uh, and, the, and two other of his disciples that were together. And they'd been walking with Jesus and they'd seen all the miracles and things but they kind of went back to what they were doing. Huh? <laughs> Think about it. They went back to doing those things before Peter fell down and said, Lord, get away from me. I'm a sinful man before he's repentance. Listen to what he does. <clears throat> Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. Was he fishing after men? No, he was going back to his regular things. Gone back. Instead of going about preaching and telling people that Jesus is the Christ and living and standing steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. And God knows what we are. And he looked and seen Peter, who was the rock. And he knew, and as he told Peter when he was there, he said, you'll deny me. And listen to that. He said, I won't do it. He even cursed. And he said, I won't deny. He said, before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me thrice. And it come to pass. And he said, but he looked at Peter one time and said, Peter, when thou art converted, strengthen the bread. Uh, 
Peter said unto them, I go a fishing, they said, and we also go with thee. It don't take a whole lot to draw you away and go right back into the thing sometimes. Without the Spirit of God helping you and helping me, listen today, unless we got the Spirit of God, we'll be in the world and we'll be in the water and out of the water. We'll be first be cleansed with God and then we're back out of it. We're in the water and out of the water and we'll question where it is this coming. That's what Peter said. He said they, they say, he said they're standing as, as, as time has went on. He said this earth is in the water and out of the water and said, where is his coming? Today people don't believe he's going to come back in the manner that he said he was going to come back. He's going to come back with power and great glory. He said the day of the Lord shall come. I don't know how they deny this, brother, that the day of the Lord shall come. Listen, the day wherein the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Everything shall be burned up. And some people separate the day of the Lord and the day of God. It's all one. He said, me and my Father, we're one. Don't separate it. It's the one. It's the same thing. The day of God and the day of the Lord is the same one. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately. So we, we have to look and see which ship we got on. There's an old ship of Zion that is passing this way and we need to get on board and the captain of that ship needs to be Jesus Christ. We need to remain in the ship and listen today and obey what the captain has to say. And that night they caught nothing. They went right back. Where, where was it at? Now we read you there in, in Luke 5 that they were in the night and they caught nothing. When we go back into the world, you can catch nothing. And even though they launched off at the Word of God, they launched off into the deep. They got some knowledge of Jesus Christ. They knew what to do. And Peter repented and said he took a listen today and he left his nets, he left his ship. He left his fishing business and all the rest of them and they followed after Jesus. Now Jesus came and when times and troubles and struggles come along and that's the way we kind of are and that's the way we are in their modern time. We look and we see all the devastation. We see economical. We see political. We see, listen today, all the different things that and time has passed by. And I was sitting and thinking about that, brother. About that song, Time. Roscoe. Look how, look how I'm sitting and thinking, I'm, next year, Lord's a will, and I'm going to retire. 30 years teaching school, actually 31. It don't seem like it's been, but just, just a couple of years ago that I started. Time has moved on. And I look at my little fellow, little Eli, my grandson, when listen that they're not even yet two years old and all the things under the progression of how much every week he changes. And how much my, me and Kathy was talking about as Eli was out running around in the yard and we was looking and seeing of our own children and listen today and some of the things that we did not cherish at the time. When they were little bitty things and, and all some of it we do in the memories and oh they were all good little youngins and they were all pure of heart. But then they grew up and boy did they grow up fast. They left home. Some of them went to college and got trash put in their heads and their hearts. That's where it's, that's what it is. Trash. And we do not, sometimes we do not, and some of them confess the Lord, but still yet some of them, and some of them now confess the Lord. But listen today, we said, keep yourself from this untoward generation. Keep ourselves unspotted from the world. I know I've been there. <laughs> I didn't keep myself, so I know where they're at. So anyhow, so look what they did. He went forth and entered into the ship and that night they went right back into the night. He said, we're not children of the night, but we're children of the day. They went back into thinking we can go on and we can work in the night. And brother, they had not launched deep enough into the deep. 
They have not got, yea, the deep things of God. It did not lodge in God. Jesus. That's what he wants and that's why he is going to appear to them to help make, make sure they're steadfast and immovable. Why do we need to come to church? Why do we need to read the Word of God? Why do we need to study the Word of God? Why do we need to have the Holy Spirit to help us teach us? Because we all need to grow. And brother, listen today as things change out here in the world. And brother, they will continue to change and they're going to get worse. But God never changes. If you want something steadfast and unmovable, look into the Word of God. Look into the leadership of the Holy Spirit. When our lives look like they're going to fall to pieces, when it looks like this world, our nation is falling to pieces, look towards the Word of God because God is still in control. Amen. And it's going to fall to pieces because God said it would. Why was God allowing the thing? Because the darkness and the hearts and the deep hearts of men. As in Psalm 64, he tells us, listen today, that they will shoot out their lip and their mouths and their tongues. And brother, they'll try to convince, but God will come by. He is all powerful and he will set everything right. You know when he's going to do it in this lifetime? When he comes back. We sit and wonder at the abuse of little children and abuse of the elderly. We sit and wonder why, how come God does not listen today? God knows all those things. Go, why don't He stop it to stop those things, brother? God's going to bring everything into judgment. God knows everybody's heart. That's what people that came to see the vastness of the power of God. And he's going to bring it all into judgment. And those that's being abused, it's not their fault, not their thing. Yeah, they'll suffer here upon this earth. But oh, at least one of these days, you know, and sometimes there's weeping through the night, but joy cometh in the morning. And so here they had went back and they were in the night and they were fishing and they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, it's time for God to come on the scene. We look and see the problems of our churches. I was in Dixon County, which I'm a member of the conference. In our conference churches, and I see how much trouble we're in. We're so locked in traditions of men. We listen today cannot turn them loose and we're wondering what our problems are and we're so locked into the traditions of men. Not being by the Spirit of God and we'll say, oh, hallelujah, we've got the Spirit of God. Brother, we better be knowing what the difference is. Some of it, I begin to, some of them would question me and they'd ask me, so what kind of service did you have? I said, well, we had a pretty good service. Might have been down here. Might have been over yonder somewhere at another church. Boy, I was in a good and today, brother, so and so leaped and jumped and he could touch the ceiling and he could walk the pews. Does that make it be the Spirit? I'm not saying that the Spirit don't move you to do that sometimes, but we better be diagnosing which one it is. What's being preached? I said, what was preached? What was meant? I don't know, but boy, he was full of the Spirit. It would be pitiful if somebody asked you what did Brother Moore preach on today and you leave out of here and you don't know what I'm preaching about today. Sure. But boy, he jumped and he could touch every light and didn't knock a one down. We have to be able to distinguish, brother. We need to be able to launch out into the deep and understand of the Holy Spirit of God. Because God's here upon the earth. You say, how? By the Spirit of God. Jesus said, I will, I'm the comforter. While I'm with you, I'm the comforter. But I'm going to go away and I'll not leave you comfortless, but I will send you another comforter who will lead and guide you all the way in the paths of truth and righteousness. And that comforter is the Holy Ghost. And He's here upon the earth. He's here to woo the lost unto Him. And He's here to help us and to guide us 
that are on the way that listen today as if we are being like Peter and listen today the rest of them, the sons of Zebedee and all those that were there and they went back into the night and to help us the, when the morning comes to help us but when the morning was now come Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus but he hadn't gotten so far away I look at us today in our churches. Have we gotten so far away that we don't know when Jesus does come by the Holy Spirit and walk the aisles? And listen, today we talk about it jumping from breast to breast. You don't see the effects of the Holy Spirit much anymore. Think about it. One of the things of the Holy Spirit is for salvation. It brings us under conviction. We don't see very many people saved anymore. We don't see many people rejoicing because we learn something of God anymore. That listen, He stirs up our hearts. I'm not saying you've got the shout all over the place. I'm talking about a testimony in your heart that listen today, I grew and I knew something today. I left the tradition of man by time and brother, I took on the Holy Spirit. And so listen today, and he said, but they did not know it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, it takes the word, it takes the spirit, it takes the voice of Christ, the voice of God. And he said, children, have you any meat? He asked this a couple of times in his word. Mm -hmm. He won't know. What have you ate? And what are you eating? So go referring back to what our pastor said this morning. The bread of life. Or are we eating? Sometimes it's not the bread of life. We're eating of religion. We're eating of tradition. And he's told us to launch out and to learn more and to know more to step for us to study. And so listen, he said, have you any me? And they answered him, no. We don't have anything. And if Christ came walking our way today and He asked us, do we have any meat? He's not asking you. He said, if my father was hungry, David said in the song, if my father was hungry, he would not ask you. Because our father owned, he said, my father owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Amen. If we're talking naturally, he's not going to ask you. But he's wanting to know, have you any, have you got anything to return back to me to show me that you've been eating of my flesh and drinking of my blood? Do you know about Jesus? How much do you know? You, he's got to know, listen today, and he knows our hearts. He knows if we say, yeah, I know all about you, Jesus. He's going to say, you don't know anything. Well, yeah, you do. He'll give you the answer. Yeah, you know Remember, if you go over to Luke, the last chapter, he asked him, he said, you have any meat? And they gave him a broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he said, that's true. He said, that's of the Psalms and the prophets of Moses concerning me. He's not talking about broiled fish and a honeycomb of the natural. He's talking in the spiritual. We got to read the word of God and understand it spiritually. He did not want the broiled fish and the honeycomb necessarily. My brother, listen today that they could feed him to listen to fill his belly. He was wanting to know how much do you know? How much did you understand about Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning him? Go and read that last chapter of the book of Luke and find out about it when you leave here. He said, he, that's what he said. He said, this is what's concerning me. I believe that's Luke 24, I believe, the last chapter. 24, 12, I believe it's 24. Anyhow, we move on. He said, have you been answered? He'll know that what knowledge did they have? And then, you know, I wrote that little note in the side. I said, how long have we been called Christians and still don't know who he is? When he comes walking our way. When, when truth comes our way. When we have that he wants to reveal something to us. Besides the tradition of men. And the doctrines of men. Because listen today. When it becomes the doctrine. Not doctrines. The doctrine of Christ. That no man can come to the Father. Except through and by him. And then we'll still get up and preach and teach. That the people got saved a long time ago. 
by the law. They kept the law. Boy, we, we, we lack an understanding. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side. They must have been fishing on the left side. Huh? Cast the net on the right side. You got to be you know, on the right hand of the Father. You got to be there with Jesus Christ who's on the right hand of the Father. Make an intercession for you and I. If we want to catch men, if we want to have knowledge, if we want to have understanding of God's Word, we got to be on the right side of God. And that's Jesus Christ. He said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. You've got to obey. Obey is better than sacrifice and hearken than the fat of rams. We've got to obey at the voice of God. Cast the net on the right side of the ship. Cast it, listen, don't be on the left. And listen, we got to, you want to find out knowledge, he said, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. He said, while we're out here getting all this wisdom and knowledge, don't leave off understanding. Be sure that we get understanding. Understand what you're eating. Understand when somebody stands by, whether it be me or anybody else behind this pulpit, understand if it's the true word of God that it's come down from heaven, that the word of God backs it up by the spirit of God that comes down from out of heaven. Don't take it on just because they got a lot of money, wear a suit and a tie, and can jump and touch the ceiling. Huh? Make sure it's by the Spirit. That's all right. If they've got all that and the Spirit of God, boy, wouldn't it be better? They cast their four, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. What was they seeing? What did Christ tell one of the churches over there in the book of Revelation? Remember thy first love. Remember your first love. Remember it before I come. He said, I would that you were hot or cold. For listen, today if you're lukewarm, what will he do? He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. So listen to what he said. They were for the multitude of fishes, for all the things. What was he showing? What happened over there in Luke 5? They drug in all the fishes, the miracle that was there to get them saved. You better go back and remember when you were saved what God did for you to brought your soul out of hell. David said he has pulled my feet up out of the miry clay. Set my feet upon a solid rock and established my goings. So they, they were not able to. Therefore, the disciples whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It's the Lord. It's more than just some little words there. Boy, I believe they was excited and said, It's the Lord. Listen, today they knew what he was doing. He was trying to show. He was now appearing unto them, showing them the same thing. He hasn't changed any from the time we got saved till now. He just wants us to recognize that it's him. That he is the Savior of the world. That he is the Son of God. That he wants us to go out and preach what he told us all the time that he was with us. What we learned about him. What he told us about Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. He wants us to go and tell these people, but so much more. It's the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that, it was the Lord. He girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked. Does that mean he didn't have any clothes on in the natural? Well, okay, if you want to use that, but it's just showing us, brother, we're naked before God. There's nothing that God. You can say, oh, God, I'll hide it, I'll close, cloak it behind it or whatever I want. But listen today, we're still, he, said, he said you're blind, poor, miserable, blind and naked. Huh? Before God. You're exposed before God. You're standing there in the spiritual terms. You're naked before God. And brother, listen today. We need to be clothed with righteousness. And that's what he needs to be able to see. So Peter realized, brother, he, he had done something. 
There's some things on over here that I'm not going to preach on today, but he begins to question Peter about some things. Peter, do you love me? Huh? Well, you know I do, Lord, but he was going to, he was wanting some confirmation. He was wanting Peter to confess he knew that Peter had denied him. And he was wanting Peter to recognize his faults. Then he could move on and preach the word and write part of this word of God for him. So therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It's the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked and he cast himself into the sea. So he's talking about salt water right back into the midst of the people. Hide me. Huh? Hide me. You remember in Genesis, it goes all the way back. You remember that they were there and they were naked and they were so ashamed. They, but listen, they put so themselves some aprons on because they were naked. They tried. Listen, today with the fig leaves, they tried to hide themselves. Those things, listen, today of the people and those things of the law, they tried to hide themselves of their nakedness and tried to hide behind the law. And God is the one that, listen, today, who gave it to Moses, who was the lawgiver. You can go all the way, you can hide yourself all you want to. You can hide yourself in a multitude of people. You can have a sea, and God said, one of these days, there shall be no more sea. I'm not talking about drying up all the salt water. He's talking about all the people. You can hide yourself, you know, all of this in the day amongst you can be in a crowd and the all of God can spot you wherever you are at. So he cast himself, no place to hide. You can cast yourself into the sea. You can try, listen to to hide it and to try to move. But see, and the other disciples came into the little ship for they were not far from the land. But as it were 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. Same thing. Boy, they had another lady. You called them before and said, Bring him up, boy. We're, we're going to see now we got so many that Jesus showed you'll be fishers of men. God, Jesus is still wanting them to be fishers of men, but with a little more knowledge than when he was walking with them. They had now, listen today, experienced the crucifixion and the resurrection, and they knew everything that he had told them had come to pass. They gained some knowledge, did they not? And he was wanting them to acknowledge that. And as soon as they were now come to land, they saw a fire, a fire of coals, there and fish. Laying there, where, where did he get the fish and the bread? <laughs> he was going to feed them. He was asking them, "Do you have any meat?" And when they come to shore, they saw a, a fire of coals, and there was fish and bread. They're prepared for it. When you're ready to come to eat of the Word of God, and He passes it around and He breaks it, He said, This is my body, and He breaks it, and He wants you to, He passes it around to you, and He wants you to eat, He said, Take ye, eat ye, all of it, for this is my body that was broken for you. He wants you to understand who He is and what power that He had. Listen to that, and still has. He has all power both in heaven and in earth. He is able to forgive something that is greater than anything upon this earth which is called sin. He's able to forgive all manner of sin except one. You deny Him till you die, He'll neither be forgiven in this earth called blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Because there's not one man, not one person upon the face of this earth that the Holy Ghost has not come to. It comes to them. I don't care where they're indigenous people out there in, in the simplicity of way, the Holy Ghost comes to them to recognize there is a God. And if we deny that of the Holy Spirit, we deny it, it's called blaspheme in the Holy Ghost, which will neither be forgiven in this world nor the world to come. And when he passes that bread around and we eat of him, he said, listen, today, the reason we eat of him sometimes, the reason we got people that are sick, I'm not talking about natural sickness, I'm talking about spiritual sickness, that there be many sick among you and we're withering away and we're dying for the lack of the bread of Jesus Christ. And so they had fish and coals, and Jesus said, bring in the fish that you have now caught. 
Show me what you've got. Show me if you understand that those things are there. And Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land. He was off into the sea. Remember, he was naked and he jumped into the sea. In the multitude, but something that will draw you out of there. Help you get back out even though you try to hide yourself. I'd rather withdraw yourself from Jesus Christ. He will help you to come to the fire. Brother, because he's the fire of God, he will help you to come to that fire and where the bread and the fish are at. And brother, to help you to have the great feast. And through the net to land for the great fish is 150 and 3. Law, oh, you're talking about jubilee. All the times, remember, in the times there's, there have been the times of Noah, the time from Abraham to David, from the time of David to listen to the carrying over Babylon before then. And now we're in this last time, and boy, Jubilee is going to come. If you want to talk and explain the Jubilee, brother, those are the three times, the 50s, when it comes up to the 50th year, brother, and Jubilee is there. In all those three times that are there, brother, they celebrated and they knew about Jesus Christ. And Jesus is one, and the Jubilee can set you free. To come to the year of Jubilee. Hmm? This Jubilee has not happened yet. It's the last time. This fourth time, those others has happened. The Jubilee has took place. For all there were so many, yet was not a, the net broken. Brother, listen today. That before, you remember the nets, so many of the nets would break. They drag in so many that the nets would break. But this one, when it's this one, it, when it's in Christ and He's gathered you in, it, He's got a net tough enough to hold. Apostle Paul said, I am committed. I am, he said, I know that all that I have committed, He is able to keep. He said, I'm convinced that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him. Whatever you commit in your life, listen today, when it's towards Jesus Christ, He's able to keep it. Because he is strong enough. He has got all power. He has lost no power. Even though we look and see how this world is crumbling. Our nation is crumbling. And listen today. Our assemblies. Where we, I'm not talking about the church of God. The church of God has lost no power. It has not went anywhere. It belongs to us as assemblies. That if we've gotten weak. Let's not blame that on God. Let's not blame it on the church of God. It's us. Because that church of God is strong. <laughs> Because it's of God, because it's bone of His bone and flesh of His flesh. It's His, it's his body. The church is His body. He shows us that mystery. And Jesus said unto them, Come and die. I remember Ashley's wife. Kathy always wants me to sing that song. I haven't brought myself to sing it yet. Come and die. Huh? Got bread and fishes upon the fire. Come and die. Come and die. No, oh, he wants them to come and eat of him and show. He's got food prepared. He said, Dude, come and dine. And none of the disciples just ask him, Who thou art thou? You don't have to ask him, brother. When the word and the truth comes by, you don't have to question, Did that come from heaven or did it come from James Moore? You'll know when it comes from heaven. You'll know what the truth is, and the truth will make us free. Sometimes we need help with that, don't we? That's why he's established some pastors, some Evangelists, some teachers, some preachers, some deacons and things for, for the edifying of the saints. It's to help edify, help us to clarify, help us to know that when these false teachers come, that's like what when they ordained one yesterday, that we always quote this, listen today, be instant in season. Out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the times will come when they'll not endure sound doctrines, but heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, desire to be turned, turned away from the truth. They hear the Jewish fables, the old wives' tales, huh? doctrines of men, those type things. That's why he wants us to come and die. And they do this, you don't have to quit. Who are thou knowing that it was the Lord? You'll know. Listen today, those things that you learn, listen today, will be from God, from the Holy Spirit. And then, then cometh and taketh bread. Jesus, the, excuse me, then cometh and taketh bread, give them, and fish likewise, the man of them, and all those that. Now, this is the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. And he went right back to shore. They went back to fishing. 
If you want to, turn with me in the book of Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We'll read just a little bit. We won't be too much longer. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 6. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? You say, I'm not perfect. You better be. I preached a message one time when I was here or wherever, so I can't keep up with them sometimes. But listen, we better be perfect. He said, be ye perfect even as I am perfect. Be ye holy even as I am holy. That's talking in the spiritual realm. If you've got Jesus Christ, you're walking in perfection. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you are the sons of God. And you cannot, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh as long as you walk in the Spirit of God. Howbeit we speak of wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. Not the wisdom of men, nor the doctrines of men, not as our pastor said, as the religion of this world. There's much religion in the world, but pure religion is this, that we visit the widows, and that's not talking about a woman, listen, today that has lost her husband. It's good that you go and do those things in the natural, but it's talking about those, listen, today that don't have Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the orphans has no father. Now, don't that take on a new meaning? Has no father? We need to get them to have a father. Uh, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Is it on earth or in earth? In earth. Let's not say on earth. That's changing the word of God. It's in earth. It's in me right here. I'm part of the dust of this earth. In earth as it is in heaven. I preached a funeral on that one time. The kingdom of God. You talking about those denominations you just talked about before? Oh, tore them all to pieces. But anyhow. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. To be able to know it, how glorious it is. To be able to know the truth, have the wisdom of God. As Apostle Paul said, when I would come among you, I would, he's talking to the church of Corinth here, when I would come among you, I would know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. How are you going to get to heaven? Be ready to give an answer of the hope that lies within you. When you're questioned in the church, how do you know, listen today, that it is the truth? You tell them it's by the Holy Spirit that if the Holy Spirit does not reveal it unto me, I'm going to wait until the Spirit does. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Leaders of this world. Son, what is a prince? Son of a king. Huh? Son of a king. But now the princes of this world, king, kings of this world, leaders of this world, even, even because, listen today, the, the father will hand it right on down to the son. <coughs> we're married, just as it was in the days of Noah, we're married and given in marriage, and we're just teaching it right on down. Religion, the father will give it to son. He becomes a father, he gives it to son. He becomes a father, he gives it to son. And we send them out. We're married and given in marriage as it was in the days of Noah. Same thing. And they knew not this world and their assemblies. And so we're not going to know until, listen, the day the Lord comes. And they did not know as it was in the days of Noah until the floods came and took them all away. And I've preached that here before. I know I've preached this. That when, listen, the day he would know Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives representing churches was in the ark. It was in Christ. Seven days. God shut the door up seven days before the flood came. And the preaching ceased. Now you sit and think about it. Oh, what a time it's going to be on this earth when God closes the door again. There's no more need for preaching. Huh? Nobody's going to get saved. The door's closed. And when he closes it, no man can open it. It's going to be closed up where it's my children, your children. Our husbands, our wives, our grandpas, our grandmas, our neighbors, our enemies. He said, oh, but won't my enemy go in? Then you need to repent. Uh -huh. I, I don't want any of my enemies to go to hell. It's because of our enemies are enemies of the cross. Uh, there's many that was among us that went out from among us, and it's called Antichrist. 
They're against Christ. That's all Antichrist is. We're looking for the Antichrist to come. You know he's going to have a tattoo on his forehead or in his head. It's going to be 666. How many people in religions are believing it? <laughs> thousands upon thousands are believing it. And they're thinking they're worshiping God and know not the truth. That the mark of the beast is this symbol. It's death. It's death. If you've got Jesus, this is how simple it is. You've escaped the mark of the beast. I tell some of my students at school, they talk about, they'll get into the discussion, talk about, I said, boys, I, I used to have a mark of the beast upon me. <laughs> you did? I said, yeah. And some of you, I see it on you right now. <gasps> Where's it at? Because you've got death all over you. Well, ain't you going to die, Mr. Moore? I said, so flesh is going to die. But it's going to drop off to receive the prize as we go flying through the air. Farewell, farewell, sweet air of prayer. Huh? Death has no hold on me. What? How, as Christians, we ought to know that we ought to have this knowledge that death, he said, that death has no more power over us, but we have become kings and priests. Unto our Lord, you say, but you'll die. Rick Mullins or somebody will come and get you and put you in a casket. He'll either put you in his furnace in there and put you in a sepulcher somewhere or he'll put you in the ground and have part of it. And I'll say, it don't make any difference what you do to this body. That's not making any difference because it ain't going to heaven or to hell. Either one. The soul and the spirit goes to there, hell, one of the other. The moment you die, judgment falls upon you. As, as you was talking about, the little, little girl is rejoicing with a new body. Right there, like with my little Kristen, even though she was 35 years old, I believe she was as innocent as a newborn babe. Amen. Huh? Enough said on that. I'll get to crying in a minute for that. All right. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If we had this knowledge, if we had gained and had the understanding and had the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding, if they had known this, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Listen today, if our leaders of our land, not just the United States, I'm talking about high order, low order our counties, Everywhere across the other nations, brother, if they had only recognized Jesus Christ to be Lord of Lords and King of Kings to the glory of the Father. What rejoicing to go on in this land. Mm -hmm. We'd have no problem. But it's not God knew it wasn't going to happen. God knew the end. In Isaiah 45, I believe it, God knew the end from the beginning. He knows everything. Somebody said this was new. I heard them say that's some new things. The Word of God. I'm talking about in church now. They said some new things. This is, this is new things. And I, I thought, well, have they not read the Ecclesiastes? That there is no new thing under the sun? Oh, we, we may have new fashions and dress and we may claim to be this way and that way, but there's nothing new. Sin, sin, sin's been around since the fall of man. Let me move on. Here's our thing, part two. But as it is written, we'll preach this, we'll teach this, and we'll stop at verse nine, and we won't continue on. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I've heard him say, you can't know, what, what, you can't know what's over there. You can't know this, and you can't know that. How much do you want to know it? Like our pastor said, if you want to know it, ask God. If you want to know it bad enough, ask God. Ask God. And, and you say, well, how will he show it to him? He will show it to you through his word, mainly if you will read it and study it. And the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you by his word. You don't need me. You don't need Gabe. You don't need Paul, Roscoe, and any of you like You don't have that. But listen today. If some of us, we all learn it different. If there's some people that can't read some people can't read. They have never obtained that. So how are they going to do it? That's what he put us for. Teachers, preachers, witnesses, testimony. Huh? 
So by the Holy Spirit, He will reveal it. As listen today, he, that's why He's appointed teachers to help us to grow. And then sometimes the teacher needs to be taught. All right, so, but and, but that's how he, he shows us. But listen, let's go to verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. You say you can't know it, but he tells us in the next verse, but he has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Amen. For the spirit searches all things. Remember the launching out into the deep? <laughs> Here it is. Yea, the deep things of God. Launch out. Listen, today you have to step out in the deep. There's a difference in deep and how much deeper do you want to go. You step out into the deep to be saved. And you can step out deeper to even know more about Jesus Christ. And both of them takes faith. You have to step out in faith to be saved. You have to step out in faith to learn to move away from the traditions of men and the doctrines of men and to look and have this Holy Spirit Beckon unto your heart and your soul and your mind to let this man be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thinking not upon carnal things. He said, for the carnal mind is enmity with God or subject to the laws of God. It's an enemy of God. And neither indeed can be. For to be carnal minded, here it is, is death. As long as we teach, we preach, and we study into the carnal mind by the traditions of men and by those things, we will die. But the spirit is life. The carnal mind is death, but the spirit is life. And that's why we, we got people says, you know, there's nobody went to heaven without being, we're talking about baptized now, we're talking about the water off down here at the river or a baptistry or somewhere. And I always point, wait just a minute, how about that thief on the cross? Oh, that was different. God's no respect of persons. The baptism, and you say you're against baptism. No, I'm all for it. I enjoy good baptizings. Huh? It's a showing forth to me and you and to themselves and the realm. They got opportunity to rise and walk in newness of life. Huh? But the true baptism he's talking about is the washing of the regeneration of the Word of God. That should happen. If you ain't baptized with that, you might as well forget about going down here to the river. If you ain't had that washing of that, you ain't gonna go, go to a baptistry. If you're afraid of the river, ain't gonna use some, all that. Now those are good things. Don't get me wrong. Those are good things. And they're needful things. Huh? But let's not preach and teach that nobody ever got to heaven without being baptized. They were all baptized. There's some under the cloud. You go back in Corinthians 10, I believe it is, they were all baptized under the cloud. They all went through the fire. So they all had a baptism. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. That's another thing. If you, if you, if you want me to preach on it, you ask God. And uh, maybe I'll preach on it the next time. So he's revealed it to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man? That's the seven. Look at man. You're no longer a man. You are a son of God when you are saved. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. You're not your own. You was bought with a price. He don't reveal it to you as a man. This takes in you women too. When he's talking talk about mankind. Until you become sons of God. You're not in the royal tree. You're not in the family of God. He's not going to show you. He could not show Peter and them those things unless Peter at the beginning had got saved. And then even though he'd messed up and some of them went back into the same old things that they had done, he said, well, look, come. Have you got any meat? No. And he said, okay, I've got some bread and fish for you here on the fire. I want you to come and down. I want you to eat. I want you to show. And then they had no doubt restoration. We talk about revival and restoration. Restoration had came. They come and they had no doubt that that was the Lord. They knew Him, who He was. Before they didn't know Him. Now they knew Him because of His Word and because of what He said. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, great some assemblies have. We now we have now we 
Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. He gives it to you freely. You want to know? Don't go up here and quote this and say, I, you man, man's never seen it, ears never heard it, neither can it enter to the heart of man. And if that's true, man does not know it. You've got to become sons of God and He'll reveal it to us by His Spirit. He will show us the deep things, yea, the deep things of God. Stepping out into the deep for salvation. Stepping out into it for growth and for learning. Which things we also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Don't compare carnal with spiritual and spiritual to carnal. You've got to separate and say they can, there's nowhere near that they can come together. You've got to know what's talked about of the flesh and of the spirit. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. See? The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, neither can he know them. You cannot know. When people say that and explain this word of God by the carnality and of the marvelous things and all the fishes and the coals and the honeycomb and listen, the broil fish and all that by the carnal means and they leave it at that, when they look and see that, that Christ was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, to be tempted of the devil, listen today, and he hungered and all the don't listen today. Let us not explain it. Let us not believe it. That he was hungered for something to eat. Bread and fish and meat and all those things. He was trying to find out from the wilderness. Our sister, and I've said this before, our sister here sings a song sometimes. What what, what was you doing when you came out of the wilderness? Well, we sung a song here before we come to pray. I was once blind, but now I see. We think that's spirit. The same thing in the wilderness. He went into the wilderness. He went into amongst all the people trying to find out, do you have anything to give me? The same thing. Do you have any man? And he, afterward, he hungered. He fasted for He stayed away from the world. All the things that was there. And listen, today he was trying to find out what they know about me. He could not find a brother. He was hungry. And he thirsted 40 days in the wilderness. No food. He couldn't find anybody. And if you, you remember, he, was, he came in the form of sinful flesh. He came in the form of man. But now he wasn't like you and I. He was made flesh like us, but he was without sin. He was without sin. But that old flesh side, of it, that God was trying his son there, looking at it, because he was God. God was in him. That's what I preached about. God was in him. And so listen, you look at it. He was trying to find out those things. He was searching the wilderness and all that. And when the devil it's his flesh, that had no he listened to that. He was looking at it. The flesh side tried to tempt him but could not succeed because he was without sin. That flesh side said, make these stones. This is law. All these things. Make these stones to be made bread. He wasn't talking about the stones and the temples laying around on that great high mountain that was up there. Talk about the law and the doctrines of men. Make these stones. People standing up on these stones and they've established that as their doctrine, as their teachings and stuff. Make these stones to be made bread. Let them eat of that. Let them be satisfied. You can be satisfied with that. He said, man liveth not by bread alone. Not all these doctrines, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's what you live on. He said, can know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. People said, don't judge me. Don't judge me, God. That is used as much as people say, don't talk to me about that. Now don't tell me I can't live like that. Don't tell me I can't live an alternate lifestyle. Don't tell me I can't do away with the life that's inside of me. Don't tell me that. Don't judge me. You don't know what I'm going through. There is not a sin that man has to happen that listen today that God, that Christ did not go through. But he that is spiritual judges all things. 
and say, well, you're in the will of God or you're not. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Man, don't have to, you know, if you know you're in the will of God, you stand there on it. Stand there for having your loins girt with the truth, having your, your breastplate of rice, the shield of faith, your feet shod with the gospel of preparation of the gospel of peace, taking that shield of faith and that sword of the word of God, which is the word of God, having on that helmet of salvation. If you've got that, even in the will of God, you stand on it. But we'll, whatever it is that we build upon, if it's in Jesus Christ, it'll last. Everything else will be burned up. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. He, he can instruct us. He can let us know what heaven's all about, where we're going to, and that's going to be free from sin, all this trouble. And he'll help us to understand down here all the things why we go through and what other people go through. Say, well, I, it's, it's the Lord's will. Now, I don't understand the love that I understand. It's God's will. Huh? I don't understand. You ever sit and think about it? Oh, I fast me. We sit and talk to them. Why, why in the world do we have to die anyway? You know, the natural. Why do, why do we get old and the heart turns gray? Huh? Why does things fall apart when we get old? creek and hurt and ache. You know. God's got answers for that. Because we're flesh. Prone to sin. Sin brought into bumps. And here we are. And God make us a way of escape. We can have that glorified body. There's an answer to all things in the Word of God. An answer to it. Uh, we can endure, if we endure these such light afflictions, uh, light afflictions, we'll have a reap in due season if we faint not. May God bless you. Brother Gabe, turn back to you. Amen.